The people of the United States and our friends and allies will not live at the mercy of an outlaw regime. Welcome to Watch Mojo, and today we're counting down our picks for the most significant events of the 21st century that captured the world's attention. If you want to go forward, you press forward. If you want to go back, you press back. If you want to turn to the left, it's like that. If you want to turn to the right, you turn to the right. Number 20, the death of Queen Elizabeth. Buckingham Palace has announced the death of Her Majesty Queen Elizabeth II. For many years, we watched history unfold before our very eyes. Elizabeth II, who ascended to the throne in 1952, held the title of longest reigning British monarch until her passing on September 8, 2022. Having ruled for 70 years and 214 days, Elizabeth surpassed Queen Victoria, who reigned for 63 years and 216 days. Elizabeth's passing in 2022 became one of the most significant events of the modern era. We just saw all the crowds and I said to my husband, I think the Queen has died. The news of her death was understandably huge given her historic pedigree. As such, an estimated 26.5 million people tuned in to watch her state funeral in the UK, making it the country's second most watched broadcast of the 21st century. In the distance, the final procession began. Number 19, the Titan Submersible. And for a very similar tragedy where warnings went unheeded to take place at the same exact site with all the diving that's going on all around the world, uh, I, I think it's just astonishing. It's really quite surreal. For a couple of days in June 2023, the world could think of nothing else but the Titan Submersible. Having launched on June 18th, the tiny boat was descending to the wreck of the Titanic when it lost contact with its mothership. Over the next four days, the world watched with increasing curiosity, wondering what had happened to the vehicle. You know, first thing I said, you know, uh, I won't repeat it, but, you know, what the hell are they doing? You know, is that how they're going to get that out to the uh, Titanic site? The event was widely discussed on social media, as millions were fascinated by the various elements of the wild story. Some expressed concern, while others joked about the shoddy construction of the submarine. Whatever the case, interest was widespread and enormous, until we finally learned that the craft had suffered a catastrophic hull breach and imploded. I like to tell people this is not your grandfather's submarine. It's got one button, and that's it. Number 18, the Black Saturday bushfires. It, it, it's very hard to stand on the oval and realize the entire town was going up. It was just impossible to think about. The former Deputy Prime Minister of Australia, Julia Gillard, called Black Saturday, quote, one of the darkest days in the country's peacetime history. And she's not exaggerating. While these fires are named after one particular day, they actually spanned several weeks between February and March of 2009 stemming from a variety of factors, including lightning and arson. I thought it was out when I threw it out the, the pipe and shit out the window. The fires ravaged the state of Victoria, destroying over 3,000 buildings and claiming 173 lives. Black Saturday itself refers to February 7th, when over 400 individual fires were observed throughout the state. The international reaction was swift, with many countries providing both physical and financial assistance. Can you communicate to the rest of Australia what your personal thoughts and feelings were when you visited those areas? Not really. Number 17, the Manchester Arena attack. So initially, I went, I went right home. I went to Florida, and I, and I was like, I can't. I was like, I'm not putting those costumes on again. I can't sing those songs again. Like. On May 22nd, 2017, pop star Ariana Grande held a concert at Manchester Arena, drawing thousands to the building. Shortly after the concert ended at 10.31 p.m., a terrorist attack occurred in the arena's foyer, killing 22 innocent people and injuring over a thousand others. The investigation continues. Emergency services still working the scene as day breaks on this somber city. The bombing attracted widespread attention, with then Prime Minister Theresa May immediately forming the Commission for Countering Extremism. A good chunk of the international reaction came via Grande's involvement. Her sympathy response briefly became the most liked tweet in the site's history. Just two weeks after the tragedy, Grande organized the benefit concert One Love Manchester, which was attended by over 50,000 people and raised more than 17 million pounds for the victims and their families. <laughs> Number 18, 
Number 16, the death of Michael Jackson. Both the Los Angeles Times and CBS News are both now reporting that Michael Jackson has died. The death of Michael Jackson was not just like any other celebrity passing. It was a truly momentous event. Despite the controversy that followed him late in life, the King of Pop was widely mourned when he died of a drug overdose on June 25, 2009. Various factors went into the widespread grief, including Jackson's enormous popularity, the sudden nature of his death, and his relatively young age of 50. Then the children left their own floral tributes. They'd reportedly written notes to him which had been placed inside the coffin. His passing caused a huge upswing in album sales, making him the highest-selling artist of 2009, with over 35 million copies sold. Jackson was so popular that his memorial service, which was held at L.A. Staples Center, was streamed by an estimated 3 billion people, just under half the entire world. Sure, there were some sad, sad times and maybe some questionable decisions on his part, but Michael Jackson accomplished everything he dreamed of. Number 15, the Beirut explosion. In video from the scene, you can see small explosions, small lights flickering in the main plume of smoke and then a massive shockwave. 2020 was a big news year. On August 4th, the world briefly set aside the COVID pandemic to focus on Lebanon, which suffered a catastrophic explosion when stores of ammonium nitrate blew in the port of Beirut. The blast was enormous, physically shaking the entire country and even being heard as far away as Cyprus. But how exactly did the ammonium nitrate explode? The cause of the fire that triggered the explosion is still unclear, but the images of its early stages show smoke coming from the warehouse. In fact, it was one of the most powerful non-nuclear explosions in world history, and it caused Prime Minister Hassan Diab to resign his position. Landmarks across the world were lit in support of Lebanon, and some countries removed their own stores of ammonium nitrate to prevent a similar disaster. It was also a huge deal on social media, with many people spreading shocking footage of the explosion. At some level, I can almost see the appeal of keeping the place as a monument. There is something peaceful about it. Number 14, the Las Vegas shooting. All I can remember now, actually, are the popping sounds of the rifle rounds or whatnot. On October 1st, 2017, America suffered its deadliest mass shooting by a single gunman, exacerbating an already bad weapons crisis in the country. A shooter took aim at those attending the Route 91 Harvest Festival on the Las Vegas Strip, attacking from the nearby Mandalay Bay Hotel. His shots killed 60 and injured over 400, with additional casualties incurred amid the ensuing chaos. Police officers step in as paramedics. You see officers stopping to render aid. You see officers bleeding from bullet wounds. In response, U.S. lawmakers banned the sale of bump stocks, which allowed the shooter's weapons to fire at a faster rate. Misinformation and conspiracy theories spread widely on social media, and the Mandalay Bay closed access to the shooter's area. Additionally, the Vegas Golden Knights retired the number 58 to honor the immediate victims of the attack. It's a constant reminder, you know. I'm never forgetting what happened that day. Number 13, Malaysia Airlines Flight 370. We are all puzzled by this, uh, by this mystery and we want to bring it to uh, a close. We would uh, dearly love for another search to be undertaken. Just like the Titan submersible, the world was left in the throes of speculation when Malaysia Airlines Flight 370 disappeared on March 8, 2014. The plane was carrying 239 people when it veered off course and vanished from radar screens. The nature of the story, a gigantic airplane vanishing without a trace, caused a huge international reaction. Initially, when the airplane made a turn without talking to air traffic control, in my mind, all bets were off. With reported sightings, wild conspiracy theories, and expert analysis coming in at equal measures. Adding to the mystery was the Malaysian government, whose reaction was weirdly befuddling and inaccurate. The disappearance led to the most expensive search in aviation history, which sadly has been unable to locate the aircraft. The aircraft was still flying as we know now. That just is so painful to think about, that four hours later, no one's looking yet. Number 12, the death of Nelson Mandela. There's Mr. Mandela. Mr. Nelson Mandela 
a free man taking his first steps into a new South Africa. Heralded as an icon of civil rights, social justice and democracy, Nelson Mandela actively fought against apartheid, the system of racial segregation that plagued South Africa from the late 40s to the early 90s. Mandela helped end the controversial system, fostered and encouraged racial equality, and became the first president of South Africa in 1994. Today, the majority of South Africans, black and white, recognize that apartheid has no future. His initial hospitalization in 2011 attracted widespread media attention, and he died at the age of 95 on December 5, 2013. Most news outlets were devoted to covering his death and legacy, and many foreign representatives traveled to South Africa to attend his memorial service at Johannesburg's FNB Stadium. The founding president of our democratic nation has departed. Number 11, the Deepwater Horizon oil spill. Also known as the BP oil spill, this unfortunately wasn't the first industrial disaster to devastate our marine habitats, but it remains the largest on record. It began on April 20th due to an explosion on the Deepwater Horizon oil platform. And there's 30,000 of these workers every day that go on the Gulf to do this work, and, and they're well trained, but you know, and, and they work to try to not have these accidents. But on this day, something went wrong, and now we're you know we're working with uh, BP and we're Transocean to um, try to find the cause. The fallout from this disaster resulted in 205 million gallons of oil discharged into the Gulf of Mexico, and effects were still being felt years after the initial disaster. Birds are still on these islands coming in here feeding. So you can just imagine the contamination that takes place within the wildlife. In fact, reports from 2012 stated that the oil refineries from Deepwater Horizon were still leaking, despite an official statement from 2010 that claimed the well was sealed. Number 10, the Israel-Hamas War. The Israeli-Palestinian conflict has been ongoing for three quarters of a century, with the 2023 Israel-Hamas War adding another tragic and bloody chapter. It's the responsibility of the, army, of the army for the intelligence. It's our responsibility to guard the people of Israel. We failed on Saturday. This is our responsibility, but now we're fighting. This latest conflict began when the Palestinian political and militant group Hamas launched a surprise attack on the 7th of October 2023, killing around 1,200 Israelis, mostly civilians. They also took 250 Israelis hostage, demanding the release of Palestinian prisoners. This is a massive terrorist attack that is gunning down Israeli civilians in their towns. In retaliation, Israel dropped 6,000 bombs on Gaza over six days and launched a ground invasion. So far, over 30,000 Palestinians have been killed. There have been widespread global protests, and Gaza has collapsed into a humanitarian crisis. Number 9, 7-7. Seven, seven. There were stories of heroism and an emergency response confused by poor communications and misinformation. On July 7, 2005, the UK experienced its worst terrorist attack in 17 years when four extremists carried out a horrible mission in downtown London. Three of the attackers detonated bombs in the city's underground, and a fourth attacked a double-decker bus in Bloomsbury's Tavistock Square. The attacks killed 52 residents and injured over 700. The media response was swift and lengthy, with many broadcasters devoting uninterrupted coverage of the attack. It is through terrorism that the people that have committed this terrible act express their values. And it's right at this moment that we demonstrate ours. The BBC website was also inundated with traffic and it recorded its highest bandwidth ever that afternoon. The bombing was later recognized at the 2012 London Olympics, when a minute of silence was respectfully observed by international delegates during the opening ceremony. Number 8. The Indian Ocean Earthquake and Tsunami Ten years on, ceremonies will be held across the region to remember all those who died on that day. On December 26, 2004, the most powerful earthquake of the 21st century to date struck off the west coast of northern Sumatra, Indonesia. The earthquake and resulting tsunami left over 227,000 people dead. I go over the roofs and over the edge and with the fence, tall fence, and then to the trees. It's, it's just happened just like that. Particularly hard hit were Indonesia, Sri Lanka, India, and Thailand. 
The disaster prompted an international humanitarian response, with the World Food Program donating provisions and various countries providing $14 billion in aid. Various fundraising events were also held across the globe, including the World Cricket Tsunami Appeal, the charity concert Tsunami Relief Cardiff, and FIFA's Football for Hope. These are some of the 140,000 homes built by the international community since the tsunami. Number seven, the 2021 United States Capitol attack. On January 6, 2021, scenes of carnage in the U.S. Capitol, Washington, D.C., shocked Americans watching the riot unfold on TV. USA! USA! At a rally before the attack, outgoing President Donald Trump told supporters the election had been stolen and urged them to march to the Capitol building. Debunked by courts, state audits, and federal agencies, this claim was part of a campaign to overturn the election results and reinstall Trump as president. This was a fraudulent election, but we can't play into the hands of these people. Within hours, 2,000 angry Trump supporters broke into the Capitol building, assaulting police and searching for lawmakers gathered to formalize Joe Biden's victory. Among them were members of far-right militias and neo-fascist groups, some of them armed. The insurrection failed, with lawmakers racing to safety before the mob reached them. Number six, the death of Osama bin Laden. In the wake of the September 11th attacks in 2001, U.S. President George W. Bush announced the beginning of a war on terror. The first stage of this war was the U.S. invasion of Afghanistan to hunt down Osama bin Laden and his terrorist group, Al-Qaeda. In this conflict, America faces an enemy who has no regard for conventions of war or rules of morality. This manhunt continued for almost a decade as bin Laden evaded capture. However, in 2011, the CIA tracked him down to a compound in Pakistan. In a helicopter raid codenamed Operation Neptune Spear on May 2nd, bin Laden was killed. After a firefight, they killed Osama bin Laden and took custody of his body. For those who vividly recalled the events of 9-11, President Obama's announcement that the Al-Qaeda leader was dead was a landmark event. <laughs> Number five, the November 2015 Paris attacks. In January 2015, France was left reeling from an Islamic terrorist attack on satirical magazine Charlie Hebdo, in which 12 staff were killed. In a video, Al-Qaeda in Yemen claimed it targeted the magazine for insulting the Prophet Muhammad. Several other smaller attacks occurred throughout the year. On November 13th, these culminated in by far the deadliest. That night, in a series of coordinated attacks, terrorists detonated explosive vests and opened fire in streets and public venues in Paris. Only minutes later, gunmen opened fire on several bars and restaurants in eastern Paris. Three gunmen stormed a concert at the Bataclan Theater, killing 90 people. In all, 130 lives were taken. The attacks sent shockwaves not only through France, but also reverberated around the world. Number four, Russia's invasion of Ukraine. For months, the buildup of Russian forces along Ukraine's border had the world on edge. Would Russian President Vladimir Putin really give the order to invade? In 2014, Ukrainians had revolted against a pro-Moscow government, sick of corruption and abuse of power. Their success led Russia to annex Ukraine's Crimean Peninsula. In February 2022, Putin launched a full-scale invasion of Ukraine, furious at the country's aspiration to join NATO. I consider it necessary to immediately recognize the independence and sovereignty of the Donetsk and Lugansk People's Republics. In response, the international community hit Russia with severe economic sanctions. Around the world, everyone's eyes have been glued to their screens, watching the outgunned Ukrainians hold off the invading forces. If we don't stand up, we don't have a country to defend. Number three, Hurricane Katrina. This Category 5 hurricane was devastating not only due to its intensity, but also a failure of flood control systems and slow government response. On August 29, 2005, the hurricane made landfall in Louisiana. It was quickly predicted to become a catastrophic event. My fear is, is absolutely that the models are correct. It is gaining strength again. It is now stalking the Gulf Coast. It rapidly doubled in size and intensified into a Category 5 hurricane. The storm surge breached New Orleans levees and flooded the city. Tens of thousands of residents had not evacuated. 
it didn't matter if you were from there. TV and radio audiences could feel the distress and panic in the air. Critics argued that race and class were factors in the slow local and federal response. This story ends up being the roadmap, the instruction booklet, the how-to story of dealing with disaster. It also tells you what not to do. The hurricane left an estimated 1,392 dead in its wake, making it one of the deadliest in U.S. history. Number 2. 9-11 Just about everyone who's old enough to remember it can tell you where they were when they heard about the September 11th attacks in 2001. And we saw the plane on the other side of the building and there was smoke everywhere and people were jumping out the windows. For New York, it was morning when two hijacked passenger jets crashed into and ultimately demolished the Twin Towers as part of a coordinated attack. Well, I just was in the lobby trying to get a cup of coffee, heard the bang. And I'm just going around the corner to see if my friends are right. I can't talk. Another plane hit the Pentagon. After news of a fourth crash came to light that day, it became apparent that the passengers of United Airlines Flight 93 took back their flight and downed the weaponized aircraft before it reached Washington, D.C. You could hear him yelling, in the cockpit, the cockpit. The event claimed close to 3,000 lives, and the world was forever changed. The other trade center's down. It's down. It's down. It's down. Before we continue, be sure to subscribe to our channel and ring the bell to get notified about our latest videos. You have the option to be notified for occasional videos or all of them. If you're on your phone, make sure you go into your settings and switch on notifications. Number 1. The COVID-19 Pandemic On March 12, 2020, the World Health Organization announced that the COVID-19 outbreak had become a pandemic. We have therefore made the assessment that COVID-19 can be characterized as a pandemic. At the time, few of us fully understood what it would mean for our lives in the years to come. Nonetheless, the news had people worldwide glued to their screens or running to stock up on groceries, especially toilet paper. To ensure compliance with the government's instruction to stay at home, we will immediately close all shops selling non-essential goods through lockdowns, the world watched as the virus continued to dominate headlines and the death toll skyrocketed from the hundreds into the thousands and then millions. The WHO's announcement was the beginning of a long, rocky road for all of us. Boosters are important, but the most important thing we need to do is get more people vaccinated. What did you think when you heard of these events? Let us know in the comments below. Check out these other clips from WatchMojo, and be sure to subscribe and ring the bell to be notified about our latest videos.